Stanley Parable. Yeah, I was finishing sending all the tweets and stuff. Alright, now that is all said and we are ready to start. Alright, let's do this. Yeah, I have not actually played the first one, so. Yeah, hi Ash. I'm not I'm doing not too badly. How about you? Yeah, I've never actually played Stanley Parable before, so I am not entirely sure what to expect. <laughs> Uh, let's go on this. Right, I should probably turn this down a little bit. Not that far down. Nice. This is the story of a man named Stan. That's great that you had a really fun time. Say cameras crouch, pause, interact, look, and move. <laughs> uh, got some bad now. Mm, I sometimes find that I do that too when I go outside. This is the story of a man named, named Stan. Stan. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427. Number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what wow. buttons to push, how long to push them, 
Hand. Can't you type faster than that, bro? This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And wow. although others might have considered it soul wounding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. As though he had been made exactly. Talk about boring. Stanley was happy. How can you be happy just typing one and button one at a time something every day? Happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk Pick up the tire hour shoes. when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Yeah, we can control it now. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? No, Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Hmm. Okay, nothing opening. Can't pick any, anything either. Wait. Ah, I thought that was going to say something completely different. <laughs> okay, dang. Okay, all the doors seem locked, so let's keep going, I guess. Don't any friggin' doors open, seriously. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. What do you reckon? Should I follow the narrator or should I go on the opposite direction? Alright. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Uh, we'll completely ignore the narrator this time, and then we'll follow his direction next time. Alright? That way we get different endings. I'd assume. Yeah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all. Just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Give me a drink. I'm thirsty. Gosh dang it. Coffee. Yes. Nope. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating. <laughs> eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Uh, what would happen if I completely ignored you? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Hmm. Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten. What? Really? 
I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes sense considering you have a sunburn. Now, listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Or did he? Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, nope. fine, go ahead, Stanley. <laughs> you want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. I won't. You see, there's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. <laughs> Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yes, because it annoys you completely. Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Yes. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved. Well, he really didn't like that option. Mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Well, it's a bit hard to go with my previous experience considering I haven't even played it before. Hey, coffee! Hey, I'm 9,328. Woo. Ah, let's go for this door this time. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game. All about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure uh, to keep notes. Have it no on the four hours. Burn, baby. Burn. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? A <laughs> bit of a... No, I'm just kidding. I like babies. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. 
I'm out, I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Ah, fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it well, seems as if you do. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Of course you like this boring stuff. Yes, this is a remounted version on the PS4. World game. Good God, quickly block it off. No, I was almost free. Close call. He really wandered off into that that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any. Oh, <laughs> he really doesn't like open there. You're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. He really likes his walls. <laughs> Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to hey, get it's lost game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. <laughs> there are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We sports should run the ball. bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Yeah. Time to get a goal. Yeah. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball... Hold on, what are you doing? Eh, technically that's you gone in. <laughs> Plop. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Daniel, come back. Right, how were you helping me before? I was completely ignoring you. Ooh. Where does this go? Ooh. I wasn't actually meaning to drop down, but... <laughs> it's stored anyway. Okay. 
It's really weird that you can't open any doors at all. Okay. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Fair enough. <laughs> Didn't even see anything and then just pitch black. Hey, I'm back at my desk. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, I know. When Stanley came right. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. We'll see where where he wants me to go takes us. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Get Chris out of the brain closet. Maybe he likes a closet. Maybe he doesn't want to come out yet. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic. Everyone is unique. Me, me, most of all. Oh, shucks. Number of slides on this slide. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all. Come on, get out of the broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Mm. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <laughs> Psych. So really like no collectibles or anything on this map. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? Yeah, because it's going around and around the circle. It's too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is I'm all a dream. dreaming. Oh, this is all a dream. Sam, felt. 
to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. I, I don't know about that one. He's pretty up, crazy. So I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing... Oh, come on, everyone has a voice inside their head. My thoughts, he thought. Some have multiple. Very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Because I have multiple voices in my head. ...to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see oh, it to make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my Wait, daughter. he has a wife? All I want is my life, exactly the way it's always been. My How do you manage to get a wife? I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. You don't sound okay. Pressing buttons. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Tea bag of death. And everything went black. Uh, a tea bag so hard that I died. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place yep, of see, work. Uh, But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man... And until she happened, starts teabagging and, and then dies from it. meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her... Teabag kills everyone. Life extension the rest of her life she had no time for this so it was only a moment that she stood there staring down at the body and then she turned and ran well, I guess I've died maybe twice so far 
and we pretty much got maybe one ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Alright, so let's get up the stairs this time. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh, you gotta be careful, because if you teabag too hard, you're gonna die from it. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs <laughs> to his boss's body. office. <laughs> Haven't seen that one in freaking years. Uh, that's the office there. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes, if the boss su suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Okay. Thanks for that crappy rhyme. Well, I couldn't take a shit, so let's keep going, I guess. <laughs> Let's check. Let's check. And try the elevator. It's time to rhyme. It's time to tango. Macky Dacky. <laughs> Do the MC Hammer with the parachute pants. Can't test this. Can't test this. This is a oh, long uh, elevator. had to do was press it again. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, that literally didn't go anywhere. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? 
What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping mm -hmm. from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. And then Ew, sheer he luck. stepped into the newly opened passageway. Uh, but Eth has been invited, but uh, I don't know what he's actually doing at the moment. But he does know that I am actually doing this stream today. And he did say he might join me. So, we'll see. Still got an hour and a half or two hours, depending on how long the game goes. <laughs> Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest. As though he felt more free to think for himself. You to spin me right round, maybe right round, right round. When for years it had never occurred to him. This question would not go unanswered for long. Yes. Give me Stanley answers. Head through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, I could go through this door. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Bring it. I'm not afraid of you. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Yeah, this is the remastered point, version. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Like I said, I'm not worried about you. I'll do it. How do I not take full damage? Seriously. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Squish. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. Killing him instantly. Hey, not gonna see it. Nah. Damn it, Stanley survived. Ooh, that's incredibly dark. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has okay. been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do wow. you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? <gasps> I'm a ghost! Hey, it's my computer. <laughs> I like Tetosh. <gasps> Someone playing Solitaire. Hmm. 
Wait, let's room. Let's go upstage. Am I Stanley? Are you spying me? I don't want. What are those? So if you don't pick up the phone, you get a different ending. Fair enough. But I then near shit myself. That was also one of them. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Turn Can off. Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Turn off your PlayStation. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let... Ugh. I got squished like a pancake. All of his co workers were gone. <laughs> what well, you're going to ask? decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. 
He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, mm. looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? <laughs> In fact, oh, you're not going to be bringing up in Kento, all right? No, it's not happening. And so the boss had assigned it an extra <laughs> Don't make me start bringing out the different the song lists. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. <laughs> this time. Uh, that song still gets stuck in my head to this day. I mean, freaking hell. It's just so freaking catchy. I'm just glad that frickin' Let It Go never got stuck in my head. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? <laughs> now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Mm. I had Lion King's uh, Kuna Matata stuck in my head. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Kuna Matata. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? <laughs> yeah. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in some This one cool pirate. Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he Three, would dismantle five. the controls once and for all. Where's the number four? Is that the one up there?
That's what then happened to me if I... And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they Maybe. kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley, yeah. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, <laughs> and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me. Where we're we going, what all this means, I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine, I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, mm -hmm. Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons. No, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button. Or this door. Everything, anything. Something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. 
And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I sure Well, the whole place went boom. <laughs> So now we've been squished and we blown up and we also died from too much tea bag tea bagging. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors. So we died three times so far. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yep, a tea bag so hard that I ended up dying. Office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. I'll just open it up. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley cast death by into the opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this <laughs> place hold? Yeah, Stanley I'll... thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Yeah, so that's a pirate room, apparently. It's pirate curve, I. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. Yeah, I said that I also watched uh, Sausage Party and I thought it was a little weird. Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yeah. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls <laughs> labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exist. Yeah, the worst thing that I've probably seen is most likely uh, Wally. <laughs> it's probably the most 
boringest movie I've ever seen in my whole life. I mean, seriously, the whole movie is just Wally Eva, Wally Eva. Whole freaking movie. It's almost like a two hours wasted. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? Gary <laughs> told me that you erased them. He realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Or was he? Okay, alright. Just got two trophies. Apparently I beat the game and got my first trophy. <laughs> I have not actually read what the trophy list is, so I have actually no idea what I'm supposed to be looking for. Let's, let's be honest, it's not always a good path. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see... Hmm. Let's see. What else have we not done yet? Oh, new content. Oh, right? new content? What does that mean? New content. <laughs> it's new content. Why does this sound like freaking Five Nights at Freddy's? Why does it feel like I'm going to be going up against animatronics now? Yeah, that's the one I got. Sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Yeah, it sounds like I'm freaking playing Five Nights at Freddy's again. <laughs> okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. You turn me right round, maybe right round. Mm. <laughs> I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> the dizziness. All right. All right. Let's see. It's 
the jump circle? Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> you get the song stuck in your head really easy. Although, so do I. Let's be honest. Hop, hop. Oh, I can't jump anymore. Pick up Buzzkill. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If and now teabagging while in the elevator. The whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. <laughs> Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Yeah, I used to be part of a choir. Uh, That's it? <laughs> kidding me. You see, Stan, in primary school. This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's trophies, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test trophy, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated <laughs> and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game? And we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills. No gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Over here in the vent, I want to show you something. Okay, let's go in the vent. Mm, I never actually did robotics, but. Didn't really learn much robotics either. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. Hmm. We're on a phone. The memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap PlayStation port? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> Well, it'll be a trip down memory lane for you guys, but I wouldn't know these things. Because, <laughs> like I said before, I have not actually played the original.
unachievable. Okay. Apparently you got nominees. Say on the bench. Who flooded this and church? Is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. <laughs> ten out of ten from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote: "Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created." Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A, a lifeless husk. husk. With an hour of new elevator content. Okay. Interesting. Memory down memory lane. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. All they had to do was transport it in pristine condition along to the PlayStation. Boom. Done. And they couldn't even do that. Couldn't resist the urge to go meddling with a beloved franchise. Hmm. Stupid boxes. Get out of my way. Dang it. I can't oh, move. These were simpler times, Stanley. But yeah, I wouldn't I'll give it back here. to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. <gasps> oh no, oh god, no, Stanley. It's a collection of reviews from Pressurized Gas, the extremely popular online storefront for computer games. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable. Oh, uh, I gotta work on the generator. A densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Mm. Like I said, I don't know. I haven't actually played the original, so I don't know if it's the same narrator or not. Uh, you guys can definitely tell me. Good, no, 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 no. for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? <laughs> you can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, 
I always will. To be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self absorption Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. And skip again. Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they... Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. Oh, goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. Yep, yeah, let's go again. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about... They didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, End Uh, we broke him. And is never the end, is never the end, is never the end, is Daylight. Well, that didn't take long for the plants to go away.
Let me skip. Yeah, damn it. I didn't want this. Everything is gone. Well, my day is not too bad. I mean, it's not even halfway through yet. <laughs> How's everyone else's day? The end is never the end. Why is that? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I think I need to go the other one. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. No <laughs> surprise. He didn't even wait for me to press it. Yeah, that's not good. Do you feel better? Ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe, it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world but here was the proof the heart of the operation controls labeled with emotions happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life for he would dismantle the controls once 
and for all. Oh, oh well, Stanley, then. you didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yes, After they yes, get I you did. enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Mm -hmm. Control? Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. I used to be ah, able to do it, but I can't do it step. anymore. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door, everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? Yeah. But you really believe there's an answer? How many times will you replay this bit, looking desperately for a solution? Ten? A hundred? A thousand? I look forward to finding out and to watching the bomb go off each time you fail. Just you and me and the retching explosion of fire and metal over and over and over for all of eternity. And Stanley died again. And Stanley died again. And Stanley died again. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it cut, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. Oh, we went completely again. <laughs> yep, we went boom boom. All of his co workers were gone. 
What could it mean? Stanley decided to get the <laughs> Yep, it really would be it goes boom. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person I think the either. door that I'm looking for is Stanley decided to go up to his boss down coming this to way. the staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility what of not? facing his boss. Maybe it's admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am. <laughs> yeah, just gonna kill myself real quick. <laughs> Eth goes kachow. What is he, Lightning McQueen now from Carl's? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Or he went on this elevator to see where it leaded. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, <laughs> from here, it's, um, left. Mm, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's to the right, my mistake. No, 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 not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh dear, will you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It's not a humping, it's a teabagging, Stanley. When Stanley... Wait, wait, what? No, <laughs> I, no, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be... Or did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or a... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story.
Let's walk around aimlessly. Because he doesn't like to do that. Okay. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? I wasn't done walking around aimlessly, bro. <sighs> stealing my fun. All these co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. <laughs> the narrator doesn't even know what the story is anymore. Took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! Yay. I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so... It job. literally put the FNAF freaking victory screen <laughs> in, <laughs> in the game. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay. I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time. I have to restart. All right, I've got a solution. <laughs> this time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help got a of the button. Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? You see, the line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. The Tim got a question mark at that door. Wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there. Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation yeah, of the nature uh, of life itself? Just goes okay, nowhere. Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now we can both agree that the nature of existence is in fact a byproduct of one's subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Cut the music. Go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in no, the story. Wait. Make sure you study it closely. Uh, wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, no. No, 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 not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you 
Well, I can't take this anymore to hell with it. Restart. <laughs> the narrator is losing it. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Okay. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Oh, no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. Yeah, well, considering it's going up in the ceiling, I can't exactly follow ah, the ceiling. A choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Uh, I want to go left. Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. Confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? Is really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the timer it uh, stopped? Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... In the meantime, everything dies. Meanwhile, Hello returns. <laughs> I don't actually know if there's anything actually new. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the trophy? Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, 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 no. I, just, I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's uh, so the stream is happening next Sunday. Hmm. 
That's from the Among Us stream that was coming. That's when the Among Us event will be coming. No, 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 I'm still not feeling it. I want this trophy to have meant something. It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way no matter the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Into 417, huh? Now, go click a few times on door 43. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. Door trophy. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a... All right. Back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. Okay, now go climb on employee four one nine's deck. <laughs> yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door four one six. That's four one six. Mm, it's supposed to uh, tap on four one six. Oh, that's four fifteen. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime. A well yeah. Uh. All of his co-workers were... Oh, please. 
Are you really just doing this for the trophy? Yes. Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, 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 no. I, just, I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, 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 I'm still not feeling it. I want this trophy to have meant something. It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way no matter the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Now, go click a few times on door 437. Excellent! I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. Back to 437. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. How are you? Click on 416 when there is no door Actually, no door called 416. Notice my sign. Yes, I have something oh, very yeah, exciting. We've almost got it. Now the copy machine do that one again. So that's where four one six is. Interesting place to have it. Finish it up, Stanley. Five clicks on door four three zero. Yeah. We did it! Yay. Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. All right. Now, there's another trophy that we can get through the new content, I believe. So let's just quickly get that and then I reckon we're going to call it because there's not much I can do because <laughs> I've pretty much got every, done everything in the game. Got all the endings so far.
You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. Okay. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why are there are so many possibilities, it could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be. But let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. <laughs> imagine if they actually do bring out a Stanley Parable 2. something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this... Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Hear me. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. Girl and trophy, you can't jump. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life.
Yeah. Hey. That's damn collectible. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Oh, goodness, um, Stanley, this is fairly awkward. I hate to do this, but before you leave, you really should go to the bucket exhibit. You see, there's a surprise I was going to spring on you later, and it involves the bucket. And I really do hate to break the illusion, but it's important that you go see the bucket, okay? All right, I'll get out of your hair now. So I gotta see the bucket. That's new. Oh, that was useless. <laughs> really want and of course the first <gasps> and most obvious answer Please. is they want to be individually recognized and validated as Jim. sorry i should have clarified right now the button only says the name jim but of course in the final game this button will say your name whatever name that is here let's have you role play as jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature just play along i promise you'll love it Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <coughs> now. Allow yourself to become Jim. Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? <laughs> Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? Jim. See, if you'd only played along, that would have been your name, the button says. But no. Instead, oh, I can't even think about it. I'm taking Jim. the Jim button away. Jim. 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 He didn't allow me to finish Jim. Maybe I'll only let people name Jim play the Stanley Parable too. They would appreciate what I've created here. Now we get to see the bucket. Was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? 
The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Yeah, well, I want to throw this in the infinite hole. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Peace out. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you With can the press bucket. the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Hmm. Oh, we can just keep falling. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain. Is there lava underneath? It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's a heavy smoker. Mm. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. And I somehow still got the bucket. It's pretty you can't throw the bucket. Turn this again. See if I can actually pull the lever. That's one big coffee cup. It's more like a shit bucket.
Yeah, it looks like what a game will use just to. I don't know, I won't fill it with chum, just fill it with no anything else. <clears throat> So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course, with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. <laughs> yeah, well, finally. The ending is never actually the end. This is the story of a man named Stanley. All of his co workers yep, were gone. and we're uh, literally just mean? restarting. Stanley decided to <laughs> go to the a second one. Perhaps he well, simply there was a bucket. Stanley felt the bucket calling to him. Stanley picked up the bucket. This is bucket size. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. And entered the door on his left. Let's see if I can speed run this. Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office. With coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Run, Stanley! Run. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by Buckethead. Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. <laughs> the 
elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest he really moment likes the bucket. he would be alright. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears. It's Stanley a fucking no interest into tears. Reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. The bucket is all my own one true friend. Proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this... Stanley in the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. As long as I don't try and get the bucket state, pregnant. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and to... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Eh, yeah, throw the bucket over the fucking rails. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have throw my the bucket. bucket with me, right? Throw I'll the bucket. Okay, won't I? Throw the bucket. Stanley throw the bucket. Very soon throw the now, bucket. Throw was about the to find out. bucket. Throw it away. Anyway, as that has been most of the endings. I uh, hope you have enjoyed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
yes, I know that the ending is never actually the ending. But since I've already seen like five endings so far, I think that is going to do it from the time being. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys on Wednesday uh, for... Sorry, uh, I don't know just yet. Uh, but anyway, I hope you'll visit me again then and yeah, let's do this once more. Alright. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.